Okay, so we're going to do a, a quick uh, overview of using Photoshop. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Photoshop. Now, if you don't have this icon down in your dock, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go to the Finder, click on it, and you'll find Applications, and then you'll just have to find it in here. So there's a folder, Photoshop, and then you can double-click on the icon in here, and it'll open up the program for you. What I'll be doing over the next week or so is I'll be changing what's in the dock. So if it's not there right now, eventually it will be. But for most of you, you won't be able to change what's in the dock. So I'll have to do that um, as a computer administrator. So you just have to be patient with it. So Photoshop takes a few seconds to open up. Uh, once it's open, you're not going to see a whole lot. But uh, what you are going to see, you're probably going to need to use on a daily basis. Um, over on the left side of the screen, and I'll just move this around a little bit here so you can see this, is your, uh, whoops, your, your toolbox. And uh, it has all the tools in it that you need to do your work. Um, over here is your layers palette. Oops. I don't know why my computer's being finicky here. There. Over here is your layers palette. It uh, basically is something that you'll need to work with all the time. So as you can see right now, I can see my desktop. I can see the files on my desktop. Some people find that annoying. Um, if you work in Windows with Photoshop, that doesn't happen. But with Macs, it does. I, I tend to find that you, you just get used to it after a while. You're going to have files for you to work with. And in those files, you're going to have images. If you want to open up an image in Photoshop, a quick and easy way to do it is to drag it onto the icon in your dock. Now, if you don't have that icon in your dock, then what you need to do is you need to uh, go to File Open, which is Command O, and once you do that, you can find your file, and I'm just going to take a random one out of here, and hit Open, and then your file will open up in Photoshop. Um, so once you've done that, uh, then you can start working with the document itself. And um, actually, you know what, I'm going to choose a different one here. Uh, something with a little more visual interest. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that will work. Okay, so I've got this picture here. And uh, you can do a whole pile of things in Photoshop. Uh, to manipulate your images. Now, Photoshop is traditionally a program that's used to um, replace what you used to do in the darkroom, uh, but it also does a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm just going to quickly go through some of the tools in the toolbox here, just to familiarize yourself with them. This is your move tool. It's the top tool. Right now, there's nothing to move around, so nothing happens. So that's uh, something that you'll be able to use later. In Photoshop, quite often what you end up doing is selecting things and either copying and pasting them or moving them around. And so if you want to make a selection, there's a number of selection tools. Some of them are predefined shapes. As you can see, there's rectangles and circles. If I choose a circle and I want to do a selection of you know, this building, it's going to select everything inside that circle. If I want to um, uh, do something with that selection, um, I, can, I can copy it uh, by going Command-C. Command V to paste it, and it doesn't look like anything happened. But if you look over your layer palette, you can see there's a new layer, and there that's what I had selected and copied and pasted. So whenever you select something and copy and paste it, it's always going to put in a new layer. And if you want to see your layers, they're over in the layer palette. If you want to hide a layer, click on the eyeball to, to hide it. If you want to delete a layer, just hit the little trash can, and it's gone. So if you make a selection with one of these predefined shapes and you want it to be like a perfect circle or a perfect rectangle, just hold down your shift key when you do it and that's what you'll get. If you want to undo a selection, say you don't want to have this selection, you can go Command D on your keyboard and it'll be gone. So as I mentioned, there's predefined shapes. There's also these lasso tools. Um, lasso tool allows you to just freehand select something just by using the mouse. It's a good tool. It's a good start point. Um, there's also the polygonal tool. The way it works is you click, and you drag out your mouse, you click, you drag out your mouse, click, drag out your mouse. And what you're doing basically is you're selecting the, uh, 
um, creating these anchor points and uh, it's like connect the dots. Once all the dots are connected, then you've got your selection. Oops. You select that and then there's the magnetic lasso tool. And what it does is it tries to attach itself to what the computer thinks you're trying to select. And as you can see, I'm trying to select this house with the fence. And okay, not a bad job, but not 100% accurate either. Selections are funny things. You know, you're never going to get what you exactly want first time off the bat. Almost 99% of the time. Um, so we have other tools. We've got quick selection tool and you can paint around something to select it. And you can see up in your option bar here you have uh, a brush with a plus sign, a plus brush with a minus sign. Minus is to shrink that selection, plus is to add to it. So this is something that you can manipulate you know, quite a bit and then you, know, you might get what you're looking for. Um, the other tool that's here is your magic wand tool. And what it does is it looks for a specific color. So say I had a rather gray sky and I didn't like it and I wanted to put in a nice sunny sky. I could click on that gray and it would select all of it and then you could copy and paste it out of there or cut it out of there. Um, or what you can also do with a selection, if I go over to my layer palette here and I click on my new layer button. I can take my paintbrush or my marquee tool, or not marquee tool, a gradient tool, and I can dump paint into a selection. So that's another thing you can do with a selection. I'll just undo that. To undo things, you go to edit, um, and you can do undo, which is command Z. Uh, if you want to do step backwards, it's option command Z, and that will uh, basically do more than one undo. If I want to really fine tune um, something as far as selections are concerned, what I'm going to do, chances are I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. And to zoom in and out, it's command plus and minus on your keyboard. I can use my hand tool or my space bar to move around. So your hand tool's over here. I find it's easy to just hit the space bar and then you can move stuff around. I'll zoom on this a little more. You can see this isn't a very good selection. If I want to fine tune it, right down at the bottom of my uh, my, my toolbox is a quick mask button. In order for this feature to work, you have to have your colors reset to black and white. So just click on the black and white button there and it'll reset it. If I click on this, you can see everything turns kind of pink except for stuff that was in that selection. So now I can use my paintbrush tool and I can paint in what I don't want and I can erase out what I do want and so it's a very handy tool. I'm just going to quickly do this. Um, it's not going to be a very good selection, but um, it's going to be better than what it was. And so as you can see, as I'm painting this in, I was changing the size of my brush as I painted. And uh, to do that, uh, all you have to do is use your bracket keys on your keyboard and they can increase or decrease the size of your brush. And you see the edges of the, the roof here and part of the fence isn't selected, so I just take my eraser tool, we'll shrink it down, we'll erase a little bit over here, and you can see it's not erasing very well, and that's because up here my option bar says opacity 20. That means it's not erasing the full transparency of that. So what opacity is, just another word for how transparent things are. So if it's at 100%, it's 100% um, transparent. Uh, or sorry, solid. And uh, if it's at like 10%, it's you know 90% transparent. Um, so once you made your selection, just click on the uh, quick mask tool, and there you got your selection. And you can copy and paste it if you want. Whoops. Right now it's saying nothing is selected. And I'll show you that again. I go Command C, and it says nothing is selected. People often do this because they're not paying attention to their layers. You have to select what you want from the layer you're working with. If you hit V on your keyboard, that's your move tool. Now you can move that around. And hey, voila, I've got two homesteads now. So, uh, or what I could do is I could resize this one. So to do that, I go Command T on my keyboard. And you can see I get this 
uh, box around my image and I can increase the size of that image and there it is. Doesn't look very realistic, but you get the idea. When, when you're changing the size of stuff as well, if you want it to be proportional when you do it, hold down your shift key when you're shrinking or blowing things up. Um, and so that's something uh, that you can manipulate. Now there's all sorts of other ways to manipulate an object that you've selected. If you go to edit and you go to transform, you got a whole bunch of things here. Uh, scale, rotate, uh, warp is kind of neat because you can, you can really warp things. Um, you know, hey, this is taken down by Pincher Creek. We'll have the house blow away a little bit in the wind. Um, so yeah, you can uh, do all sorts of things with uh, your selection once you've you've got it. Um, other tools here. This is your crop tool. You're not going to use your slice tools. That's for web stuff, and you're never going to use that in this class. Uh, crop tool. Well, it'll crop an image. So you make a selection and you hit enter on your keyboard or you check your little check mark up here to say yes this is what I want to do or cancel no I don't want to do that um, so that's something that you can use your eyedropper tool will pick colors for you based on an average and you can see up here it says point sample 3 by 3 all the way up to 101 100 by 101 if I zoom in on my photo here you can see that this is um, a whole bunch of pixels Right, and they're just a bunch of different colors. And so if I'm taking the eyedropper tool and doing 100 by 100, then it's clicking on um, uh, the point that I'm clicking and all those pixels around it. If I do a point sample, it really is literally that pixel that I'm clicking on. So that's something to be aware of as well. Healing brush tool, spot healing brush, patch tool, red eye tool, all of these we'll probably look at later on. They're for fixing up stuff, um, but uh, we'll take a look at those in a little while. Paint brush tool is pretty straightforward. It's a paintbrush, and so it does exactly what you would think it does. It paints, as you can see, there's a big glob of paint. Um, and I can change the size of my brush, the style of my brush, maybe I need some some stars uh, and so uh, so yeah you can choose your brush here you can change the style of your brush you can change the size of your brush uh, and how transparent it is so if it's a hundred percent opacity that's solid paint if I have it at um, say 20 percent then you can see through it right uh -huh. so that's how that works Clone Snap Tool is kind of cool. What it does is it takes a snapshot of whatever's underneath your brush, and then it allows you to paint with that. So it's kind of a two-step apart process. The way it works is you hold down your Option key, and you see your mouse turns into this little target. You click with your mouse, and it'll take a snapshot, and you let go of your mouse, and then you can paint with that. Now, the reason nothing's happening is because I'm, I'm totally on the wrong layer. So I'm going to get rid of these other layers just for a second. And then they won't bother us anymore. I'll do that again. And you can see I'm repainting that cloud. And you can also see when I'm doing this, there's that little plus sign. And it shows you where it's targeting that information from. So it gives you a fairly accurate um, depiction of where you're getting um, the information. So clone stamp, we may play around with a little bit. Uh, we're probably not going to work with the history brushes, so you don't need to worry about that. Eraser tool does exactly what you think it does. It erases stuff. So if I were to create a new layer here, and I was to take my paint brush and paint it on here. Oops, I'll turn up the transparent or the opacity there. Um, and I was to take my eraser, then I can erase what it was that I did. Okay, that's how that works, pretty simple. Um, there's other kinds of erasers. Magic eraser tool is something that get, gets used quite often. It picks a color out and it erases it. Paint bucket tool, it just dumps in paint, just like that. Um, if I dump in paint over this, you can see it's totally solid. But over in my layer palette, I can turn down the transparency of that. So if I want kind of a bluish tinge to this, I can have it. Or I can blend this with one of these blend options. 
and have uh, this thing blend together with the color I've chose. Like that. So it's kind of a neat uh, tool to have. Um, and you can play around with it uh, quite a bit. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, very simple to manipulate uh, your image in a number of different ways. Uh, your gradient tool, the way it works, pretty straightforward. As you can see up here, there's a bunch of gradients. Um, you can create one if you want. We're not going to mess around with this too much, so I'm not going to worry about showing you too much with this. But the way a gradient works, say I select this here, all I do is I click and drag out my mouse in the direction I want it to go. There it is. Okay, like I said, we're not going to worry about that too much. Smudge tool. Blur, sharpen tool, blur tool. Smudge tool will just smudge things. It's like working with, um, kind of like working with wet paint, I guess, is the closest thing you can compare it to. Uh, you can also use your sharpen tool. I don't recommend people sharpening things unless they absolutely have to. And I'll show you right now why that is. If I sharpen an area on my image, and I turn this up to 100% strength, and I keep doing it, what's going to end up happening is it's going to get rid of information. And if I zoom in on this so we can see this a little better, you can see you're just left with a bunch of horrible looking pixels. You don't want that to happen. So sharpen, don't use it unless you have to. Um, blur, well, it'll do what you think it does. It blurs things out. Um, and we have our dodge, burn, and sponge tools. Dodge tool, I'll turn off these other colors here. Dodge tool, the way it works, is it will brighten up stuff for you. So it's a great tool to have. And quite often people use this, you know, to brighten up a sky, or to whiten people's teeth and eyes, and things like that. Burn tool does the opposite. It makes things real dark. Okay, your sponge tool, it has two options, desaturate and saturate. Desaturating turns stuff black and white, basically. It takes the color out of it. Saturate, which is the other option, makes the color really come out. So it really exaggerates what's there. So um, it's kind of a, a cool tool to, to play around with a bit. Um, your pen tool, we're not going to worry about because we won't be using it. Text tool, we will be. And the way it works is just click on your text. You, can, you have two options. You can click and drag out a text box if you want. I don't like to do that myself. Um, I just click on wherever I want to type. I type some stuff. And then if I want to change it, I can. I can change the color. Um, I can change the font if I want. Uh, so say I want to go with, oh, I don't know, this Pac-Man-like font, and I can change the size of it. There we go. And then with fonts, cool thing about fonts is you can add effects to them. So in your layer palette, you can add things like a drop shadow. You can bevel and emboss it to give it a little more depth and texture make it maybe look a little more metallic, that sort of thing. So you can really play around with the stuff. Um, no real right or wrong. And this is all just kind of trial and error. Uh, there's no real handbook on this, so experiment with it and you'll, you might get some cool results. Um, I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, so you've got your selection tools, you don't have to worry about that. Shape tools you might use and basically do what you think they would do. You draw a shape with them. See what I mean? Um, there is a custom shape tool, which allows you to select a whole bunch of different kinds of shapes. If you don't have all these in your selection, click on that little button there that looks like a play button and just go to all. And then just go append and it will have all of the shapes there for you to use. And you could just, you know, click on a shape and draw it out. So maybe a fleur de lis, there's a fleur de lis. And then you can even add an effect to that, like, you know, a drop shadow. And you could add that bevel and emboss that I mentioned. Um, there we go. Cool. So uh, 
if you want to move something around, you just hit the move tool and you can you can move it around. Or let's see, it helps if I select the right player. There we go. Um, and that's basically it. That's basically what we're working with. Color palette here, if you click on it, you can change your colors just by sliding this stuff around, selecting what you want for a color. And that is really the basics with Photoshop. Now, there's actually not a lot there, but uh, that'll get you kind of up and run, uh, running with it. If you need to save your file, just go Command uh, S or Command Shift S for Save As. What you'll do is you'll go to your desktop, and if you want a shortcut for that, it's Command D for your desktop. Select the folder you want to save it in, and hit Save. It'll ask you if you want to do that. Hit OK, and you're done. That's it.